Welcome to ICS or the International Church of Shanghai. I'm so glad you can be with us today. In just a moment, we have a time to enter into a time of praise and worship with our worship team, and right after that, the preaching of the word. But first, here are some announcements in the life of our church. We continue to worship online as we await the restart of our church. As soon as we hear any further news, we will let you know. We thank you for your ongoing patience and prayers. Please note that ICS is a multi-denominational Christian church. In compliance with local government regulations, ICS online services and events are open to foreign passport holders only. Cell groups. One thing we truly value at ICS is community. Whether you're joining us for the first time or you have been joining ICS for quite some time already, cell groups are where you can develop real and lasting friendships to support one another that go beyond greetings or quick chat at church on Sunday morning. Are you interested to do Bible study? At ICS, we offer a discipleship program by partnering with CDSI for their Bible study lessons and materials. Some of the cell groups have started the study already. So come on! Join our cell groups. To find a cell group that's perfect for you, please scan the QR code or send us an email to fill in your requests. We'll reach out to get you connected right away. With the new ICS phone app, you can access online services, sermons, daily devotions, and everything on the ICS website with ease in one place. Download yours now. Available on the Apple Store and Google Play Store. And for more details. Please scan the QR code. Have you had your daily bread today? Our body needs food every day, and so does our spirit. ICS devotionals can help you start off your day with a short message, along with some scriptures to meditate upon. ICS Kids Church now also has daily devotionals for your kids, and ICS Trailblazers also provides devotionals for the youth. All these three devotions can be accessed on our ICS website or on our ICS app, or just simply scan the QR code. So check out our very own ICS devotions if you haven't already. Start reading and sharing our daily devotions to those who may be missing out. Do you like and feel benefited from reading the ICS daily devotionals on the ICS website or in the compilation books? These are prepared by our small devotionals team, each with a giving heart and with a skill to extract, write, and to summarize the pastor's sermon into a brief and encouraging devotional message. We are now looking for more writers and editors to join us. Do you feel like you like to write? Feed and digest on God's word, draw upon its application into our daily lives. The process of writing daily devotionals is very rewarding on so many levels. It will enrich your knowledge of Scripture, your spiritual walk in our world, and the love of God. If this sounds like you, and you would be interested and willing to contribute some of your time. To help yourself and others by providing the spiritual food for growth together, please contact me, I'm Mark, or Brian to have a chat. Thank you. The 12th ICS Charity Golf Tournament will be held on the 14th of October. 
Our aim is to raise 600,000 RMB this year for 10 underprivileged families of illness and students who cannot afford to support their school's fees and living costs in Hong Chao community. All donations will go to help their needs and there are many ways of how you can help or be involved in this event. Be a sponsor, take part in auctions, donate prizes, gifts or cash, play golf or be a volunteer helper. For more information, please contact Kathleen via email as what's shown on the screen. Hello there! TEC prepares many exciting events all year round to keep the community connected. Here are just a few. Find out more by scanning the respective events QR code. Do continue to follow TEC through our official WeChat account or TEC mini program to get involved. Stay connected, be a blessing. We want to thank all our members for your ties and offerings. It makes a real difference not only to the operations of our church, but allowing us to be blessed to bless the community around us. If you're new with us, don't feel any obligations whatsoever. We're just so glad you can be with us here today. If you have come prepared to give, please note ICS as a new bank ties and offerings QR code using Alipay or WeChat Pay. Please leave the payment remarks in the remittance blank or without inputting anything. If you prefer to get via local bank transfer, please scan the QR code for the bank account information. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. Thank you so much for your support to ICS. Okay, let us come together for our time of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father God, Lord, we pray and we thank you, Lord God, that you're bringing us together, Father God, to praise and worship you and to hear your word today. We pray and thank you, Lord God, for our praise and worship team and the unique gifts and talents that you have blessed them to be able to unify us as one body and one voice to praise and worship you. And Lord, we also want to uplift our Pastor Daniel and Pastor Kelly into your arms right now and ask, Lord God, that you bless them with wisdom, clarity and conviction as they preach your word, Father God. Let it go forth and not return void. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Shida, we 
me 
Father, we praise you and thank you that China's 20th Congress date has been set to be in mid-October. We pray for the session to be fruitful. We pray that, Father, um, you will help them to discuss more about the um, leadership and also about how COVID-19 will be dealt with in China. We pray for a loosening of policy so that they will give us more freedom to travel and normalcy will return back to the city of uh, Shanghai and Greater China. We pray for our effort as we engage the local authorities regarding the resumption of services of ICS. We pray for favour with men, Father God, and help us to have the wisdom to negotiate with them regarding how we are able to uh, restart the church services in order for us to come together on site to worship you in spirit and in truth. Meanwhile, Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we can continue to worship you with our tithes and our offering. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hi, Church. Hope you all had a good uh, summer break, or at least be glad that uh, the hot summer in Shanghai is finally over. ICS would like to invite you to complete a quick survey, which only take less than a minute of your time. Basically, just to help us understand, uh, get a better picture of our current church demographics uh, since we've been worshiping online. So please scan the QR code uh, to start the survey. Thank you for your time. Fear is real. Every one of us can be subject to fear, but we need not be tormented by it. I had the opportunity to speak to a group of elderly in Hong Kong during my recent transit in the city before heading back to mainland China. These elderly were fearful of contracting the COVID-19 virus and all the other fears associated with life on earth. Praise the Lord, six out of 40, four of them received Christ when a message of salvation was delivered to them on that day. We need to learn to laugh while looking at fear in the eyes with the help of God. We are no longer a slave to fear because we are a child of God. Honestly, there is nothing to fear if we are convinced by the perfect love of God, that God is for us and with us in every situation of our lives. Most importantly, we have peace with God since Jesus has dealt with the sin issue that separated us from God. Let us read together a short passage from the Bible. 1 John chapter 4, verse 17 to 19, from the New King James Version, it says, Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as He is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love cast out fear, because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We loved him because he first loved us. Nobody will be absolutely without concern, discomfort, anxiety when we enter the high court of the country for trial even when we are innocent or not at fault. We will be grilled by the prosecutor and judge by the judicial system of the country. We would not want, we, we would want a good mediator and engage a good lawyer or queen counsel to defend us depending on the country of residence. It doesn't mean that one will have a good night of sleep before the trial, even when we are sure of our innocence, because the trial is subject to interpretation by the judge. We are at the mercy of the judge and to be given a fair trial. It is in, it's especially important to have a just and righteous judge that presides over our case. That's the discomfort and uncertainty brought about by a trial on earth. It is unimaginable to be bold in the presence of God at the day of judgment, knowing that He is holy, 
righteous and just. His holiness detests sin in His presence. We are aware how imperfect we are without Christ in our lives. Therefore, there's absolutely no bonus nor confidence to stand before God except in reverential fear and trembling. However, if God says that we can be bold, then we should know the reason for the bonus. We will understand the bonus in His presence when we fully grasp the perfect love of God. Fear is tormenting. Verse 18b of the main text says, Because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. There are many other fears while we are on earth besides the fear of death and coming before God on Judgment Day. Fear is tormenting because it grips us mentally, emotionally, and at times physically depending on how we have allowed it to immobilize us with the unknown. The fear of the different scenarios, outcomes, and consequences of what we are facing in life at the moment. Of course, the ultimate struggle for everyone will be at the deathbed. Most of us would think that we can control our lives, but the fact is we cannot have absolute control. There will be many occasions when we feel that we have lost control over our lives and no amount of money is able to resolve it. Let us take COVID-19 virus as an example. The virus is unseen and everyone that we meet daily can be a carrier of the virus. The person might seem normal, but the incubation period could be three days and there are no symptoms of infection yet. Therefore, if we are fearful of being infected, then we will probably stay at home, be away from the crowd, and sanitize everything and everyone in the home. While it is good to take precautionary measures, but it must not cause us to be overwhelmed by fear. Some are afraid of being locked down again. Some are even afraid to receive text messages or telephone call from the health department. It is still very real today. Some are fearful of not performing up to the expectation of our parents when we are young in this highly competitive society. Fear of losing out. Fear of continuous online studies and not being able to leave for overseas education with the strict border restrictions. Fear of not being able to make the transition into the corporate world after graduating from university, thus it causes some individual to continue with endless academic studies. It is escapism. Fear of not being loved by our spouse as we age, wrinkle, and our body goes out of shape. Fear of being abandoned or betrayed by our spouse as we age, so we are very insecure. Our insecurity will cause us to be suspicious and worried. Insecurity is the worst emotional enemy. Fear of being abandoned by our children in old age so we are jealous of the attention they give to their spouse that leads to bad in-law relationships. Fear of not having enough money for retirement due to the rising cost of living and global inflation. Fear of falling sick and chronically ill thus we are reacting to every symptoms in our bodies. We read and listen too much into others' experiences that cause us to even doubt the medical specialist. Fear of dying. Everybody's body, especially its organs, ages, and will eventually pass on. It is a fact in life. The fear of the unknown when we are uncertain and not confident to meet the Creator God who is holy, just, and righteous. The greatest fear that one will face will be on a day when we are meeting God face to face on a day of judgment. It is especially true when someone has not accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior because the person will be thrown into the lake of fire. It is done when his or her name is not found in the book of life. The important question is how we face death with bonus. How does it help when we know where we will be heading after death? There is a day of judgment for everyone after we die. The day of judgment. Verse 17a of the main text says, Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have bonus in the day of judgment. The day of judgment should be a dread to many of us because nobody would like to be found lacking or be meted out with a harsh punishment. It is to be thrown into the lake of fire for eternity. Often, we measure ourselves before God based on self-worth through our moral values, behavior, and self-righteousness because we operate in filial love. In fact, 
Nobody will be confident or bold in the presence of God if it is based on filial love because we are imperfect and have tremendous shortcomings in our lives regardless of the severity of it. What's filial love? Filial love is an emotional love. It means to be a friend to another, to be fond of, have a liking for an individual or an object, to have or show affection for. Friendship love requires attention. It is based on the qualities in another person that you find admirable or attractive. Filial love does not does feed on response, and it cannot survive without response from other. Filial love gives if it receives, thus it is a conditional love. Credit to Precept Austin for this expanded definition. We base our love for people on filial love. Therefore, we always thought that God loved us based on filial love. That's the reason for us to have an emotional roller coaster when we measure God's love for us based on how good we are or have been periodically. We will never feel secure in our walk with the Lord because we measure ourselves and the acceptance by God based on our performance. That's the reason why the Apostle John says we need to understand God's perfect love to deal with the fear. Filial love means I will love you if you love me. It would be difficult to love with filial love because we live in a fallen and imperfect world. So people will fail and disappoint us. We will also fail and disappoint others due to the weakness of the flesh, including believers. We are emotional beings. We can feel love. We can also be offended. We thought this is the way God loves us too. That's the reason why the Apostle John says we need to understand God's perfect love to deal with the fear and insecurity that we have before Him. Mankind desire to be loved and accepted by God, but they know that there will be a consequence for sin even when they have not read the Bible regarding the lake of fire. I remember when I was young, my dad brought me to this unusual park in Singapore. It is called the Hua Pa Villa. This garden is not meant for the faint-hearted. In fact, it could bring about nightmares for young children because this place depicts what men think hell is. I saw at different stations how individuals are tormented for the sin in their lives in the afterlife in hell. At one station, someone's tongue was cut off for telling lies when they are, he was living on earth. And another person's torso was ripped open when he was caught in adultery. There were many more of such scenes in this garden. But these are made believe by man's imagination because many believe that one will not escape being punished for the evil that they have done on earth. What does the Bible say about hell? Hebrews 9.27 says, And it is appointed for man to die once, but after this, the judgment. Revelation chapter 20 verse 15 says, 14 to 15 says, Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire, this is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Can you imagine if Hades was already the place of torment where the scorching heat was never ending, then how much more the lake of fire is a place of eternal sufferings, the second death. God doesn't want us to be judged, neither does he want any one of us to end up in the lake of fire. However, he must set the place of judgment and torment because he is just holy and righteous. What is perfect love? The bonus to stand fearless in the presence of God on Judgment Day comes from the understanding the perfect love of God. Verse 18a says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. We are very used to imperfect or conditional love, therefore there is a constant fear of not measuring up to expectations. However, scriptures tells us that perfect love casts out fear and we shouldn't be tormented by fear. Agape love is perfect love. Let me give you the definition of perfect love or agape love. It is the undefeatable benevolence and unconquerable good that always seek the highest good of the other person. No matter what he does, it is the self-giving love that gives freely without asking anything in return and does not consider the worth as an object. It is a love by choice. It is a decisive love. Credit to Pre Precept Austin for the extend expanded version of the definition. God expressed his perfect love through his action. He is seeking the highest good 
for us through His action. Let us look at how God pursued us with His perfect love in order to get us into the highest good that He has intended for us. Genesis 12, 3 says, I will bless those who bless you. I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. God established a covenant with Abraham so that through this unconditional covenant will come the Messiah. It is through the work of the Messiah where all the families of the earth will be blessed. It is an unconditional covenant, which means it will not be spoiled nor subject to the imperfection of mankind to bring it to pass. It will definitely come to pass in His time and arrangement. The blessedness of all families of the earth beside the chosen people of God is not having the sins and lawless deeds imputed on them, but rather to have the imputed righteousness of Christ for everyone who believes in God's time. Jesus was born and came into this world to die for us. It is shown in Romans chapter 5, verse 8. New King James Version says, But God demonstrated His love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Remember, while we were still sinners, while we were still imperfect, it cannot be filial love because filial love will not love because of our imperfection. It is agape love, the perfect love that demonstrates God's love for us while we were still sinners. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For He made Him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 to 14 says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For as written, curse is everyone who hangs on a tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. These three passages of Scripture reveal to us the fulfillment of Genesis 12, 3, where the Gentiles are included in the salvation plan of God. It is all the families of the earth will be blessed through the Abrahamic covenant. Love has a corresponding action, and it is in giving. In this case, God demonstrated His love for us when He intentionally planned to have Jesus take our place on the cross. He gave Jesus to us despite of our sins, imperfection, and lawlessness. Jesus was cursed and made to be sin for us. God wanted the best for us out of His agape love. He gave us Christ's righteousness at the divine exchange on the cross. He took our inf infirmities, He took our filthiness, self-righteousness, inability, right, inability to stand right before God, all the curses that's brought about by the law and our sins and, and, and place it on His beloved Son for us. God judged the sin of mankind. Jesus experienced the wrath of God on our behalf, went to the depth of the earth for three days and re re resurrected because He was sinless personally. We are imputed as righteous because of the redemptive blood of Jesus Christ. It has everything to do with the achievement of Jesus for us and it has nothing to do with us. Jesus has obtained this boldness and fearlessness in the presence of God based on what He has done for us. It is the gift of righteousness so that no man can boast because it is purely by His grace that He has imputed this righteousness on those who believe. Glory to God! Ephesians chapter 1, verse 6 to 7 says, To the praise of the glory of His grace that He made us accepted in the Beloved, in Him, we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace. Once upon a time, we felt insecure of God's love, felt rejected by God because of sin, but we are accepted in the Beloved now. We do not have to wait till we go to heaven. All the spiritual blessing in Christ belongs to us now. We are forgiven for our sins through the blood of Jesus Christ. It is given to us by the grace of God. Grace means there's nothing that we can do to make God love us more. There's nothing that we have done or spoken to make God love us less. He accepts us based on what His beloved has done for us on the cross. We are hidden in Christ. That causes us to be loved and accepted now. That's the reason why we have boldness in the day of judgment because our ability to stand before God is not based on filial love, but agape love and all that Jesus has achieved on our behalf. God sees us in Christ. Praise the Lord. That's perfect love that casts out all fear. 
Romans 5, 1 says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The wrath of God towards the sin of mankind was placed on Jesus Christ. The death and the shed blood of Jesus Christ has appeased God against our sin. We have peace with God through the work of Jesus Christ because we are justified or made righteous by the redemptive blood of Jesus. Therefore, God is not against us, neither does He want to punish us, but desire to journey with us on earth before the second return of Jesus Christ. There is no fear when we are confident that we have peace with God. He has promised us that nothing will separate us from His love. He will never leave or nor, nor forsake us. This restored relationship with us is the very purpose and plan of God to send Jesus to die for us so that He is able to journey with us during the days of tribulation on earth. We have no fear because we have faith that God is watching our back. We are able to deal with all kinds of fear mentioned in the earlier part of this sermon. When we have the Lord journeying with us and His grace being infused into our hearts, then we will be able to produce perseverance in the midst of suffering. This peace with God achieved through Jesus' death and work of redemption grant us to have boldness on the day of judgment. The peace of God is already available on earth now. We have peace with God because Jesus has dealt with the sin issue that separated us from God. The blood of Jesus Christ has appeased God's wrath towards the sin issue of mankind. We are blessed with all the spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Therefore, God loves us with the unconditional love that desires the best for us, has caused us to have the imputed righteousness the moment we believe. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Verse 17b reiterate, re reiterate this truth. Because as He is, so are we in this world. It might sound arrogant, but it is true that we are seen as righteous before the Heavenly Father based on what Jesus has achieved for us. We are given the righteousness of Christ based on 2 Corinthians 5.21. Therefore, as He is, Jesus is righteous. So are we in this world. We have identified ourselves with Christ. It is an imputed righteousness the moment we believe in Jesus Christ. It has everything to do with the grace of God because of His perfect love for us. It is perfect love because it is unconditional, has absolutely nothing to do with us. It is with this positional truth given to us in Christ that caused us to be bold on the day of judgment. We need to be humble to accept this truth that is apart from the law and has nothing to do with any form of human effort. It is based on agape love, not filial love, that we are accepted in the beloved. When we understand this kind of perfect love, then we will go forth to love one another with His love. When someone fully appreciates this perfect love that's graciously extended to us, we will also be gracious and loving towards people who are imperfect in our midst, starting from the church to the world. We have bonus because God gave us the best mediator in heaven. Verse 18b says, Because fear involves torment, but he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We will be fearfully tormented if the sin issue has not been dealt with by Jesus Christ, because nobody is able to redeem himself based on good works, religion, or philosophical, philosophical practices. We, the believers, are still imperfect and will have moments of weakness when we are faced with temptation. We are redeemed and forgiven with our sins based on the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the mediator who stands before God on our behalf to mediate our case. Let me give you the definition of mediator. According to strong concordance, is Messiah. A mediator is one who stands in the middle between two people and brings them together. It is basically a neutral and trusted person in middle, a so-called middleman. It is one who works to remove disagreement and thus a mediator, go between, go between or re reconciler. In short, Jesus is the mediator, the one who stands between man and God to bring them together. Again, credit to Precept Austin for the expanded definition. Do you know that the book uh, Job in the Old Testament didn't have a mediator while he was suffering. Job 9.33 tells us, Nor is there any mediator between us who may lay his hand on us both. 
Job was hoping that he would have a mediator in heaven between him and God when he was going through the period of suffering. Job was living before the patriarch. We are very blessed to be living in a New Testament age. We are blessed to be able to look at the work of the cross. Hebrews 9.15 tells us, For this reason, he, talking about Jesus, is the mediator of the new covenant by means of death for the redemption of the transgression under the first covenant that those who are called may receive the promise of the inter eternal inheritance. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5, 6 says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man, Jesus Christ, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Christ Jesus is our mediator. Whenever the devil brings an accusation against us daily, it will also be on the day of judgment. Jesus will show forth his new pierced hands and sight, reminds the heavenly father of his blood and the work of redemption. He mediates for us when we have sinned against God. We have a clean record and have no past because everything is under the blood of Jesus Christ. God who forgives us our sins, remember the sins and lawless deeds no more. Therefore, there's no record except the imputed righteousness on us. The accuser of the brethren cannot get any condemnation against us because God is the one who justified us. Praise the Lord. That's perfect love. And that's a life that's fearless because we believe in the work of Jesus Christ. We have bonus because He gave us an advocate in heaven. 1 John chapter 2, verse 1 to 2 says, My little children, these things are right to you so that you may not sin. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And He Himself is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the whole world. Revelation chapter 12, verse 10 says, Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of His Christ have come. For the accuser of the brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast now. You know, these two scriptures tells us that, you know, as Christians, there will be times where we sin against God. But praise the Lord that we have an advocate in heaven where Jesus being the righteous person and the he, has, he himself is the propitiation for our sin will advocate for us against the accuser of the brethren. Most people uh, will attempt to engage the best lawyer in their field to mitigate the case before the court of justice. There is the prosecutor who accuses us of a crime and a defendant lawyer who defend our innocence be before the court of justice. The devil acts like a prosecutor in the presence of God who accuses us before God day and night. The devil will also condemn us in our mind by bringing to remembrance all the past wrong that we have done. He will always accuse us for not being good enough to be loved by God. He will even deceive us into thinking that God is against us, abandon us, will never ever love us because of our shortcomings. All these accusations and condemnation will bring about fear insecurities before God if we do not know and understand what is being presented in the sermon today. Praise the Lord, we have Jesus as our advocate in heaven. We have the best lawyer in heaven to defend us. In fact, this scripture says, He Himself is the propitiation for our sins and the sins of the entire world. We overcome the devil with the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Jesus is our strong advocate and provide evidence that the penalty of sin has been paid because He is the propitiation for our sins whenever there's a charge against God's elect. He will show forth the blood that was offered in the heavenly tabernacle for our sin. He is the high priest who has offered His blood once and for all. He has sat down beside the Father because the final sacrifice has been finished. Jesus played a double role of an advocate and a person who has paid the price of sin for us. Jesus will silence the voice of the enemy who brings a charge against us. There's nothing to fear because it is God who justifies us. This is the very reason why the Apostle Paul was so convinced that God's love will never depart from us when he wrote Romans chapter 8. God's everlasting love will cause us to be fearless from now till eternity. Romans 8 verse 31 to 33 says, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, 
who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. I would like to think that these three verses summarize what I've presented to you in the earlier part of this sermon. It is God who justifies. It is God who intentionally established the Abrahamic covenant so that all the families of the earth will be blessed. God, through His perfect love, pursued, restored, redeemed us to Himself through the blood of Jesus Christ, despite of our sins, weaknesses, and lawlessness. He gave us His best in His beloved Son. He wants us to have the highest good, the ability to stand right before Him just like we have never seen before. That's boldness in the day of judgment. That's fearlessness. Therefore, there's no demonic operations or thing in this world will be able to separate us from God's agape love. God has intended to love us unconditionally. If God is with us, then nothing can be against us. That's perfect love. It is through the understanding of God's perfect love that casts out all fear. When we understand and fully grasp God's perfect love for us, then there's absolutely nothing to fear in this life and life after death. Truly, there's nothing good that He will withhold from us when it comes to life on earth and the needs that we have in this life. He will freely give us all things. There is no fear once we are secure in God's love because it is God with us. Then who can be against us in all circumstances? We are fearless because the rejection and insecurity has been dealt with. We are accepted in the Beloved. We have a new identity in Christ. We can always restart life all over again without any concern regarding how men will look at us. We will be fearless during tribulation, adversity and hardship because we are confident that God will come true for us. We are fearless in the face of death because we are confident in the positional truth that is found in Christ. In conclusion, the truth of the matter is the day of judgment for each one of us will come. This is true regardless of our status in society or whether we are believer or not. The difference between the believer and the unbeliever is huge. We can either face it boldly because of the positional truth that we have in Christ or in fear and trembling because we haven't made Jesus Christ our Lord and Saviour. Praise the Lord that He has assured us through this passage that we need not be fearful from now to the day of judgment if we are able to understand His perfect love expressed through the work of Jesus Christ. We are no longer slaves to fear because we are the children of God justified by Him. There is nothing to fear in life if we are fearless of death and judgment. It is a tremendous blessing to live a life without fear. Therefore, you and I are to live with faith and confidence in the perfect love of God from now till we meet Him face to face fearlessly. With God on our side, there is nothing to fear. Let's bow our head and pray. With every head bowed and every eye closed, I'd like to ask a very critical question. If you are listening to this sermon, you are not a believer of Jesus Christ. You are gripped by fear of death. You are gripped by fear of the things that you are facing in life. Let me tell you, God wants to be with you and to be for you. But you need to make the decision to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If that is you, will you say this prayer together with me? Say, Dear Heavenly Father, Thank you for sending Jesus to die for me on the cross of Calvary. Forgive me of my sin. Come into my life today. Be my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, Amen. If you have said that prayer, I'd love to hear from you. My email address is written at the bottom of this page. Write to me so that I can connect with you and send you some materials and inform you when our church services resume at Millennium Hotel, Shanghai. Let me pray for the rest of you. Father, I praise you and thank you that your word has gone forth and will not return void before you. Help all of us to be that good soil to receive your word. Allow the word of being confident and fearless in your presence to take root in our lives. 
never allow this truth to be stolen. Let it grow into a conviction so that the devil cannot uproot this conviction in our lives. Father, I'd like to pray for whoever is going through a time of tribulation and adversity, especially those who are going through a trial in the court of justice. May your peace and your bonus go with them. May they find favor with men as they favor with you. And I pray for all who needs a breakthrough in their lives to have that breakthrough because they are fearless, confident and secure in your perfect love. And I pray that Lord, your love right now will permeate every room based on those people listening to this sermon right now. I pray that your love will just fill their heart, oh God. Overcome their heart with your love. And may your peace guard their heart and their mind in Christ Jesus. Now may the love of the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Well, I hope you enjoyed the service today and thank you so much for joining us. And I know that you've been encouraged by the preaching of the Word, that you know that God loves you and He has good thoughts toward you. You can continue to follow us on our website uh, and our social media accounts in YouTube, Facebook, you can Instagram, or simply drop us an email to keep in touch. And here at ICS, we're a church we're a family that's blessed to bless the community and the nations. So we hope that you were blessed today and you're really trying to think about how you can be a blessing uh, to your neighbours and those around you. Well, we hope you have a great Sunday ahead and we look forward to seeing you real soon. God bless.